Do you know the number one reason why some websites are slow? It's not complicated code or server issues. It's as simple as unoptimized images. This has to be addressed because 72% of visitors won't return to a website after a single slow loading experience. But here's the great news. Unoptimized images can be fixed easily. That's if you have the right tool. In this video, I'm sharing how to use Pix Resize, a free tool that I developed to quickly and securely batch resize and compress images before you upload them to your website. There are already so many image compression tools out there. You might ask, why did I even have to build Pix Resize? If you've taken any of my courses, you've probably heard me recommend Photoshop scripts for image optimization. It's so powerful and can process images in an instant. But during a routine SEO audit of my own website, what I found made my heart sink. Hundreds of massive images ranging from six to 10 megabytes were negatively affecting our site speed. It turns out my sister who helps manage our website content doesn't have access to Photoshop. And when she tried using online alternatives, she kept running into problems like their websites are sketchy and plastered with aggressive ads. There's also complicated interfaces and others lack options to specify maximum file size. And those that worked great like squish.app do not have batch compression options. And that will be so tedious because we'd have to process hundreds of images one at a time. And this is why I built Pix Resize myself to have the following key features that will address those known limitations. Pix Resize is secure, simple, and fast. It's secure because everything is processed locally right in your browser. There are no data or images sent to any server. Second, it's really simple to use. There are no signup required and there are also no aggressive ads. Lastly, it's fast because it supports bulk image processing, similar to Adobe Photoshop scripts. Now let's dive right in how to use it. First, let's go to pixresize.com. Immediately, you'll find these options, which I thoughtfully added based on image optimization best practices. I provided those customization options for width, height, and quality because website platforms might have different recommended image specifications. For Squarespace, for example, these are the recommended settings. For the width, for most images that don't span the full width of the page, the width can be set to 1,500 pixels. And for images that span the full width of the page, it's best to set it to a width of 2,500 pixels. For instance, for this website, for most of these images, I set the width to 1,500 pixels, but for these images like galleries, which span mostly the entire width of the page, I set the width to 2,500. And for the file size, it's ideally less than 500 kilobytes, but if we can further lower the file size without affecting the image quality, that would be best for speed. If you're using other platforms like Webflow, ShowIt, or Wix, most of these settings would apply as well, but it's best to check the documentation. If you're using Shopify though, I find that their automatic image optimization is sufficient most of the time. So you don't need to pre-process the images unless the weather height goes beyond 4,472 pixels and the file size goes beyond 20 megabytes. Now let me demonstrate how it works. What's great is our tool can support batch processing. So if you have a set of image um, provided by the photographer, or the client, then you can simply select them all and make sure to drag and drop them to this box for the images. 
then we have the option to batch rename the processed images. So because this is for the brand Atelier Colomb, I will add this prefix Atelier Colomb. So it won't simply adapt these automatic naming from the camera. And then as I mentioned, for most of these, 1,500 pixels would be sufficient. We don't need to specify the height because we'll maintain the aspect ratio. And then for quality, most of the time, I recommend 80%, but you may also consider lowering it down to around 60% if the images that are processed are still more than 500 kilobytes. And then all we need to do is click this option to process the images. It will take some time depending on the initial sizes of the images and the number of images. This one was processed in less than 30 seconds. And then all we need to do is download the file. It will be downloaded as a .zip file with a prefix as you've indicated. And then once you unzip it, the folder will contain all the images that were processed. And you'll notice that it's less than 500 kilobytes. But if you think that there's still an opportunity for you to further reduce the file size without affecting the quality, then I also recommend trying lowering down the quality or adjusting this based on how you wish the images to look like on your web page. As for the file format, most of the time JPEG is recommended, but if you need to preserve the transparency of the image, then you can use this PNG option. I just have to mention that if you're processing really huge images like these ones, which are more than 20 MB each, then it might be best to process the images in batches like 10 at a time. And then you'll notice that it will take time for it to be uploaded. And initially the fields might not be as responsive as earlier, but don't worry, the images will still be processed. It will just take a bit more time. I really hope you'll find this tool helpful. If you are a designer, feel free to recommend this to your clients such that if they are maintaining their own blog and they would have to upload 100 images in a gallery, they will be reminded to pre-process the images before it affects their SEO as well as site performance. If you're interested to check out more tools that will help you to streamline your web design process, please click this link to explore more tools. And I'd love for you to check out our next video all about CopySpark, an AI powered tool that I developed to help you generate content for your website.